Okay, yeah. As a disclaimer, we know that as architects, we're more architecturally focused on building as opposed to implementing. So with this database, we're going to do a very high level um, execution of setting one up. Um, we won't be doing any cure, um, any uh, query editing because it gets into the code and thereby development. Um, so we're going to stay focused on what the concept of data, what, what the database is and being able to set one up. So here we go. I need my drum roll music. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, everyone, if you are following on your AWS management console, I'll give you uh, just a, a minute or two to kind of log in and, and get focused, and we'll set it from there. That that timer was the minute timer, by the way. Okay, well, there it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we have to... Hey, we got to follow what, what Chris says, go. So we have to stay focused. So, okay, um, I am. Can you, um, the, I think, uh, can you do the, can you zoom in a little bit? How's that for everyone? Is that okay? There we go. I think that should work. Okay, okay wonderful. Okay, so we are, um, as we spoke, we're going to be working on databases. And specifically, we're going to go into our RDS management console. And we're just going to set up a very simple, or rather, I'm going to follow through with what I've already pre-made um, for a database as it takes a while to spin up the uh, database cluster. So I'm just going to walk you through what I originally put forth um, already. So once you get to the AWS uh, Management Console, you're going to click on to RDS, and you're going to arrive at the dashboard, okay? And we're going to create a database. So I'm going to switch my window already as we've already went through this. So as a create database, my focus was on uh, MySQL. It's very simple um, and wanted to just create that high level execution. And we're going to move over to the next screen. So I've already, um, I guess I've, I'll walk you through so that everybody is comfortable and understands what the execution is. So I pressed MySQL. Uh, SQL is a database. It is a structured relational database. And we uh, put in the free tier so that we don't want any surprises, although I'm hoping everyone already uh, went into their management console um, and set up their AWS budgets for um, experimental uh, purposes. And so now we're in the settings right now. So what you want to do is that you want to... Um, make a name for your your database you want to name it you know you want to you want to make sure you associate it with what you need it to be and for the credential settings um always like to keep it as admin very simple execution and you're going to create a very simplistic password for yourself so that you can access as the administrator into your your database to make certain queries or uh, make adjustments as necessary you want to also Confirm your password. And it says that right now because, you know, I've already done it. So we're just going through, again, um, all the checklists and stuff so that um, if you want to actually execute your own database, you can follow through. So keeping it, you know, free tier, we're only using a, a regular DBT2 micro to just illustrate what we're doing. And with that storage, along with that, it's just a general uh, solid state um, SSD GB2 um, uh, storage type for that. And we're only allocating, um, allocating 20 gigabytes. So we can actually start off with a smaller number um, originally at 20 gigs, but you can execute it um, all the way up, I believe, to 256, I believe, um, or even higher than that. Um, but based on, on the allocated storage, we want to keep it down low um, so that we don't allocate more um, and it really jumps up higher, <clears throat> excuse me, higher than, than your AWS budget allocation can handle. So we don't want any surprises there. So storage auto scaling, we can enable uh, storage auto scaling, but we want to turn that off because, again, um, based on any traffic and how you, you scale and 
and uh, uh, set up your database. You know, you don't want to scale up and scale down and create um, undue budgetary concerns for yourself. And because we don't have um, 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 enabled any um, any of those features, that's why we don't have uh, multi AD de um, AZ deployment, which is you know creating that standby instance. And in the event that the main instance dies off, it moves and um, creates a standby instance. You know, in the case of of, of a fail. So with connectivity, I always um, I already created a or rather used the default VPC to execute this uh, database. If you want to create or associate in a, a database that you already uh, set up, you have to make sure that your NACLs, security groups, subnetting, route table, you have to make sure your environment is fully connected, fully secured, and ready to make um, queries um, with against that database. So moving forward, I chose my existing uh, default VPC and security groups. And your availability zone, make sure that wherever you are, make sure you associate that availability zone to, to, what, to work, what works best for you. Because if you choose something um, out of your availability zone or further away, it creates latency. Latency is time and, and possibly more money for you. So with database authentication, um, you want to use that. So once you log into your database, it will um, ask you and prompt you for your admin as well as your password credentials. And then you're going to create that database. Now, remember, I already created the database. I wanted to just illustrate it for you because it takes time to spin up that cluster. So we're going to move over into my R, um, RD, uh, RDS Management Console data, database that I've already created. So now I have my database demo. That's the name of the database that I've created. And so now you can take a look at uh, what's going on with your CPU utilization. I really enjoy the dashboard and the ability to take a look at where your database is, what the CPU uh, CPU utilization has been, um, things of that nature. Oh, this is the wrong database. This is the one that I created, my database. So now, you know, as you can see, it, it takes a while uh, for this stuff to move. And sometimes you have to, to refresh your page a bit. So now this is the one that I actually here we go. Sometimes AWS, it's very slow, and then it, it takes a while for it to catch up, which is why I didn't want to spin one up in real time. So now, again, um, this is my SQL um, engine, my database engine that I spun up again. We talk about CPU utilization, um, what we, where we are, the class, um, the region of which I spun it up. And what I really love about it is uh, that it provides all the connectivity um, information that you need to get an understanding of what's going on, what the name of the subnets are. It creates your one-stop shop of understanding uh, what your database is doing, and it also provides uh, monitoring. Um, I really enjoy this dashboard because it creates an understanding of your CPU, uh, CPU utilization, um, your database, database connections, um, free storage, everything. And you notice like when I have the freeable memory and, and you think about the writing dev um, writing IOPS, you can think about, you can see how I spun it up and you can see uh, the throughput of what's going on here and the exercises that I've, I've done with it prior to me setting it all up. So I really like the dashboard on what's going on and, and how you can get things going. So in the event you ever want to use, if you want to query against it, you this is where you connect to your database. You you know you have your database instance cluster. You choose that database. Um, you choose all your associated database username, password, and enter the name of the database that you you set up originally. I'm not going to go down this path. I just want to illustrate because this is where it gets into the developer piece of 
um, querying against your database based on um, on the strings and, and, and everything else associated with it. So um, that's what that's how you set up uh, set up. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you set up the database, um, the query database for yourself, um, specifically for SQL. Uh, really, um, it's just really instrumental in making sure that you keep your your administrative you know, admin password and information available for yourself so that you won't forget it because, you know, there's nothing worse than like we discussed before is not is locking yourself out of your own system. So ensure that you have your information and your database uh, stuff available. So um, that's it's a very high level, very easy, quick uh, setup for this database. Um, for you to be able to experiment with. And when if you want to spend more time with a query editor um, and adding on certain code, um, again, this is not what uh, solution architects do, but if you want to play around with it and search it against yourself to get an idea of how things work, you know, it's definitely, you know, I definitely encourage experimenting and learning every, all that you can at, you know, on the AWS database um, and everything within the environment itself. So I think um, if there's, you know, like I said, very quick, very easy, high level click understanding um, what you're clicking, why you're clicking it, um, so that you can set up the database that is perfect for you. And also, you always want to give enough um, gigabytes and, and memory to kind of create more of a growth so that you can grow into it if you experience more traffic for your database, but you also want to just keep it low, experiment with that information um, and just adjust as necessary so that you don't have extra um, extra budgetary concerns for that. So based on that information, it's that's about it. It's really quick. It's really easy to set up. And, um, you know, as configurers, uh, that's what developers and administrators, they focus on uh, building it, configuring it and maintaining it. But from a uh, solutions architect's per perspective, understanding what the concept is, um, why it is, when you would use it, are those those are the three questions you ask yourself, um, especially with the exam on on how you can successfully answer those questions. So if there's that's anything else. And that's really key is to know which is the skill for your job. Yes. As the architect like Alonzo and I, we start with the customer. We're asking that executive, what are their business goals? What are they trying to achieve? These are the things that we want to know. Yes. Now we're gonna we're gonna design it. That's our skill, that's our expertise. It's design, it's presentation, it's you know, doing the ROI modeling to show the customer the value of the solution is greater than the cost of the tech. You know, that's what we do. The cloud engineers build it. After the cloud engineers build it, this, they turn it over to sysops people to maintain them. Heck, some of the times we can just have a DevOps engineer in, and build it all as infrastructure and code. We design it and they build it. So the key is being really great on your job. Now remember the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam is a cloud engineering exam. It's related to the name of the service and how to configure it. It's completely unrelated to what we do as architects, which is design. We solve business problems with technology. So please kind of keep those things in mind. And that's why, you know, when you get architects like me and Alonzo, we still know how to configure because you still have to know how, but we don't do it. It's not part of our careers. Like by comparison, a cloud engineer that's an expert at these things may not be able to convince the CEO to spend a billion dollars on a technology solution because that's not what they do. They would have no idea what the CEO needs to hear, what they care about. It's a completely different world.